opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Every way that you made, every door that you've opened for us, just for being God, for being good to us, for being faithful to us, for being kind to us. Lord, truthfully, we can say that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we're grateful. We are a grateful people. We are a mindful people, mindful of all that you've done and who you are. And Father, as I stand before your people for these brief moments, I ask that you would move Eric Murphy out of the way, move flesh out of the way, and just speak to us on today. Speak a word to encourage us. Speak a word to give us direction. Speak a word to give us clarity. Touch some heart, touch some mind in this place on today. Let your will be done today. And Father, we will be so careful and mindful to give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor for everything that is said and done in this place. The mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to the book of Numbers, the 23rd chapter. Numbers, the 23rd chapter. I will not be before you long. The Lord say the same. Amen wanted to just give you what the Lord has given me for this morning and we will be in the way on the way and out of the way because we have to observe holy communion I thought it not robbery the Lord brought us through 30 days of consecration and so what better way to break a fast a spiritual fast amen than to partake of the Lord's Supper amen so we will be doing that on today I'm going to ask even if you will not be participating in the Lord's Supper unless it's an absolute emergency please remain to the conclusion of the service is that all right amen we want to dignify the Lord's service is that all right numbers the 20 um third chapter and we're going to read the ninth verse the 19th verse I'm going to read from the King James version first and then I'll read the New Living Translation okay uh, if you can those that are able would you please stand for the reading of God's word numbers the 23rd chapter 19th verse reading from the King James version and it reads, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The New Living Translation says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not a human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I want you to uh, look at the person sitting next to you and even if they're a little ways away from you and just, I want you to say uh, my subject to them today. A promise, a promise. is a promise. All right, now look at the person on the other side, and if there's nobody on the other side, look back at that other person uh, and tell him again, say, hey, hey. A, promise a promise is a promise. A promise. Amen. Amen. It's often stated that if you want to understand the nature and character of God, you should study the Old Testament. Um, because in the Old Testament, and hear me clearly, you began to see a picture of God. Now, the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. Amen. But we can see his character, his nature, the way uh, that he moves. Uh, and if you just begin to read the Old Testament, you will see his attributes, his heart, uh, his mind, what pleases him, and even what angers him and moves him to wrath. 
Um, and as you begin to connect the dots, and I'm not just talking about the Old Testament, but as you begin to connect the dots of the entire uh, Holy Scripture from Genesis through Revelation, you will see that a very clear picture of God begins to unfold. And I don't know about you, but those that know God and have studied his word, it becomes abundantly clear one thing, and that is that God is a promise keeper. Amen. I'm, not, I'm not talking about me. I said God. God is from Genesis to Revelation. If you have never read your Bible all the way through, let me give you uh, the cliff notes. Uh, uh, they used to have uh, those books they call, uh, uh, you know, uh, car mechanic for dummies. Uh, well, let me give you uh, 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 the cliff notes. God is a promise keeper. There is not one time throughout his word where he has said something and he didn't follow through with it. I don't care how long it took. I don't care how impossible it looked. If you see in his word where he told somebody, including you, that he was going to do something, he does it. God is a Promise keeping God. And I don't know many men that have that kind of track record. You probably don't know many that have that kind of track record because even the best among us has fallen short of our word and broken at least one promise. I'm not going to take a poll like I did last week and ask. Because <laughs> I believe the results will be the same. I asked, is there anybody in here who has not lied and not a hand went up? So we're not going to do a poll. But I know even the best among us has broken at least one promise. Amen. Amen. But God is not a man. Thank God. Lord, I thank you. And this is a problem. Listen to me. Because we've gotten accustomed to dealing with each other. And a lot of times we use that as a point of reference when it comes to dealing with God. There's a singer by the name of Israel Houghton. And he's of a biracial background. He's uh, a half black and half white great talented musician but he said he grew up without a father and because his mother's father never wanted her to have him warned her that he would disown her if she had him he didn't like his own grandson and he said one day I, all the other grandkids were hopping on his lap and he was hugging him and he said and I jumped on my grandfather's lap and he said and he pushed me off and so he didn't have a father figure and the man that could have been a father figure to him didn't like him and so he said when I came to Christ and when I became a Christian and I got to church and I heard people talking about a loving father and I heard people talking about daddy wrapping their arms around him and God the father who loves me. Uh, he said, I could not relate to God the father because I never had a father. And I believe that's many of our problems because if you have been used to dealing with abandonment, it's hard for you to comprehend a God that says, I will never leave you Neither will I forsake you. And if you're a type of person that can hold a grudge for 30 years, it's hard for you to identify with a God that forgives all offenses and says, I will cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Lord, amen. And when all you've dealt with are broken promises, it's hard to fathom a God, Lord help me, 
that keeps every promise that he makes. Do I have a witness? Some of you used to dealing with cheaters. And so if you get a good man that don't cheat, you think he is. Who's calling? Who? Where you been? Why you late? Why? Because all you've ever dealt with. Y'all got quiet now. Hold on. If he's sitting next to you, don't look at him. Just say amen. Hey, right? But if that's all you've ever dealt with is a no good man, if you get a good one, you don't know how to act. You actually came home when you said you were going to come home. You pay the bills. You understand what I'm saying? And so, if you've ever had a promise broken to you, somebody ever told you they were going to do something and didn't do it, I've had it happen many times. Had a young man come to the church and tell me, God told me to support this ministry. And he said, I want you to give me 12 of those envelopes. And I'm going to send something to your church every month. I want one envelope for every month. I said, man, you don't have to do that. No, I'm going to do it. Give me 12 of those envelopes. So I brought him the 12 envelopes and I gave them to him. I said, again, you don't have to do this. No, this is what God laid on my heart to do. One envelope for every month. And it's been about six years. And I haven't seen one of those envelopes. And I haven't seen him. And when you're used to dealing with man, hello, it's hard to fathom a God that said, I'll never break a promise to you. And the word declares that God is not a man. Say, thank God. Hallelujah. But God is not a man that he should lie. He won't lie. Lord, help me. And I know now we have evolved and we found nicer ways of saying that word, lie. And so we say alternative facts. <laughs> say a, a tall tale. You told a mistruth. You, you took creative license. I heard somebody back there, a white lie. <laughs> Is there a white lie and a black lie? I don't know. Or, or like the former occupant of the White House used to say, it's fake news, you know. Uh, and we found interesting ways of covering it and disguising it and putting things on it. Uh, but I've learned that you can take a pig and put lipstick and a bow on it and a pig is still a pig, is it not? There was a television show that I used to watch, and don't y'all judge me too hard, called Catfish. <laughs> Anybody know what a catfish it is? Not what you think. Catfish is, and this is the day we live in. I'm going to educate some of y'all today. Catfish is when somebody takes an image offline, they download a picture, and you know, they might take a picture of Denzel Washington or Halle Berry, and they take these pictures and they make a profile on Facebook or Twitter, and they pretend to be that person. And they interact with people, and they, people get a DM, oh, Halle Berry sent me a DM, and all of that. And finally, the show would come time, these people would try to meet him and they would even call him on the phone and disguise their voice pretending to be this person and they would say it's funny because I try to meet him in person and something always comes up they're always busy and I don't know why I can never meet him in person so they contact this show called Catfish and they arrange to meet him and they bring cameras and when they finally meet this person and they thought they were meeting Denzel Washington and Al Sharpton walks out. <laughs> they call it catfishing. I call it a lie. Amen. <laughs> and I know that everybody in here has either been lied to, lied on, 
or you've lied to yourself. Amen. Amen. But I'm so grateful that God is not like us. The word says he won't lie. He cannot lie. As a matter of fact, God's word said that it is impossible for him to lie. Y'all don't believe me. Turn with me quickly. Hebrews the 6th chapter. Hebrews the 6th chapter. Starting at the 15th verse. He cannot lie. He will not lie. It is impossible for God to tell a lie. Hebrews the 6th chapter starting at the 15th verse. Hebrews the 6th chapter starting at the 15th verse. He made a promise to Abraham and said, I will make you the father of many nations and your seed will be innumerable like the sand. Told him, I'll give you a child. Even though your wife is past childbearing age, how can these things be? If God said it, he's going to do it. Amen. What he told him was so crazy, his wife laughed at him. This ain't no way, no. But if God said it, he's going to do it. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, starting at the 15th verse, said, then Abraham waited patiently and he received what God had promised. He's a promise keeper. Now when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. And these two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. God is so awesome. He said that when he made an oath, he said, I swore by my own self that I would do it. I didn't have to, we put our hand on the Bible and say, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And God said, there's nobody greater than I am. Who can I swear by? He swore by his own self that he would do it, and he did exactly what he said he would do. It's impossible for God to lie more, for more than one reason. You got to understand that God's words have creative power. What does that mean? That means that that God speaks and what he speaks must come to pass. Whatever he says becomes. And so you, if you or I were to look out into the void of darkness and space and begin to talk to things and call out things that did not exist, folks would say you were lying or you were crazy. But because God is God and there is nobody like him, Lord help me, because he's all powerful, God of the universe, the true and the living God, looked out into the void and the blackness of space and called light forth. And there was no light. And some people that may have been there and observed this happening, maybe the angels were wondering, what is he doing? And he said, let there be light. Light had not existed. But because he's God, and the Bible says that his word will not and cannot return to him void. His word went out and said, there may not be any light, but we can't come back to him without light. And we're going to find light. And so he spoke and said, let there be light. And the Bible said that light came forth. Yeah. He called the oceans into existence. He called the world into existence. And then he made something called man, Lord. 
and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Whatever God says must come to pass. And because God said that Sarah would bear a child, even though her womb was past the time of producing uh, children, because God spoke it, her womb had to come to life and line up according to what God had said. And I want you to know there's some things even in your life, hear me today, that God has spoken over your life. And I know some of y'all look at me crazy. It took 25 years for God to bring the promise that he made Abraham and Sarah to bring it to pass. But it said when the fullness of time had come, that an angel came back and visited him and said, God is going to do exactly what he said. There are some promises that God has made to you and her. And as surely as I stand here, I'm telling you, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Lord, help me today. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. If he said it. Now, it'd be different if he didn't say it. It'd be different if he didn't say it. Because if he didn't say it, you know, this is the problem with some of us. I've learned some people go out and do some stuff, start ministries, and then they start faltering and failing, and they say, well, God, you know, why are you letting my church fall apart? The Lord said, I didn't tell you to start it. You know, I'm not responsible for supporting illegitimate children. I didn't tell you to birth that. But if God tells you to do a thing, listen, Lord, if he tells you, that's the only reason I'm standing here today. Because before I walked out of a building that, at a church that I had been in for 12, almost 12 years, with no money, with no building, with, with, with nothing, the only thing I had was a word from God. That, you, that's all I had. I didn't know where I was going to be the next week. I knew I wasn't going to be worshiping there because God said start a church. But I didn't know where I was going to be. I didn't know what I was going to do. All I had was a word from God that said, if you trust me, people will come. If you trust me, this is going to be a church one day. And that's what I, you know, if you got a word from God, that's all you need, Lord. A word from God is more than enough. Now, if he said it, now talk about the stuff you said. We, we lie on God sometimes. But if God said it, he's going to do it. If he speaks it, it's going to come to pass. If he promises it, he's going to back up his word. As a matter of fact, and I'm a witness, God said, I'll add more to it. Lord, help me. He said, I'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could even ask or think. He said, if I said it, I will do it. Now, there's a saying that says, I'm almost done. To be human is to error. I've been guilty. Listen to me. Pastor Murphy. I have been guilty. I'll admit. Of telling somebody I was going to do something. And I wasn't able to follow through with what I said. And it was not because I was practicing deception. Or being dishonest. It is because I am human. And with my humanness come some limitations. Unlike God, I can only be in one place at one time. If anybody's figured out how to do anything more than that, let me know. I had to start learning to tell people, no, listen. I had a preacher call me, can you come to my service? And my daughter's birthday was the same day. I said to tell him, no. Because I can only be in one place at one time. I'm limited by time. I'm limited by space. I'm limited by finances. Yes, I told you I was going to buy that for you. But this water bill said different. Come on. Hello. But I've learned that God will do what he says. And even if it doesn't happen, and this is what some of y'all are at right now. Hear me. I'm almost done. God will do, don't, don't trust in me, but I'm talking about God. God will do exactly what it says. And here's a part. And even if he doesn't do it immediately, 
You can rest assured it will happen. I'm telling you. But here's the problem with us. And you can clam up on me if you want to. We don't like waiting. I know this is tax season. And I work with some people that can't wait for the W-2s to get put in the mail. And especially if they know there's a refund coming. Some of them will go and try to print the last paycheck they had and go off of that. Some of these tax companies, you don't even have to wait for your refund. They'll give you a check, a loan up front in the amount of what you supposed to get back. I have a witness today. Some of y'all log on to where is my refund? Do y'all know what that is? <laughs> Checking your account every day. When is it coming? When is it coming? When is it going? Coming. But when you're old, Lord, come on, you take your time. And I've learned that waiting makes some people nervous and anxious. I really am almost have you ever told somebody something? You ever told somebody you were gonna do something? And they worried you to death. Anybody ever been there? You to the, especially your children. But I know some grown folks. You tell them you're gonna do something, and they worry you to death. I told him, this was somebody grown. I told somebody I was going to do something for him. And I kid you not, they called me four to five times. In one day. I answered the first time. And I told them, I'm at work. And they said, yes, I know. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. But I'm at work right now. I'm not even supposed to be on the phone. And I thought this was an emergency. That's why I answered. But I'm going, I'm going to get it done. And they proceeded to keep calling. And then when I didn't answer, they started sending text messages. And then when I didn't respond to the text messages, they called one of my family members. And my family member called me. And I answered their call. And they said, so-and-so. I said, I already told them. <laughs> I told them I was going to do it. And I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. And they worried me. I had so many voicemails when I got out of work. And here's the crazy thing. The funny thing is, the thing that I said I was going to do for them was sitting in my car, packaged up, and ready to be delivered to them the whole time. If they would have just waited. And don't we do God like that? He said, didn't I tell you I was going to do it? And we said, well, Lord, when? Well, how long? Well, God, I've been waiting. The Lord said, I said, I told you I was going to do it. And I'm going to do exactly what I said I'm going to do. And just like me, God said, I have it right here. Come on. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. It. If he said it, he's going to do it. I'm telling you, if he spoke it, I'm a witness. He will make good on his promises. God will make good on his promises. Is there anybody here, and I just want just see your hand, that you asked the Lord for something, or God himself has told you he's going to do it. And you're waiting on it. Can I see it? Anybody in here, you're waiting on it. Can I tell you? Hear what I'm saying. God's going to do it. I'm, te I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I know. God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. He is a promise-keeping God. Amen. What time is it? Amen. He's a promise-keeping God. A promise is a promise. Amen. We're getting ready to pretend. As I said, please don't leave. We'll be getting out of here just in a moment. 
Amen. We're getting ready to one of the promises that he made us. He said, I'm leaving, but I'm coming again. And he said, and until I come, I want you to do something in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And he told the disciples of the Last Supper, and he said, and the day will come. He said, I'm not going to partake of the Lord's Supper with you all anymore after today. It's the Last Supper. He said, but the day will come in my Father's kingdom that we'll be able to do this together. But the promise is, but until that day, he said, this do in remembrance of me. Amen. What I did for you, the shedding of my blood. Amen. For the remission of your sins and my sins. Amen. We're getting ready to partake. As I said, just please, even those that won't be participating, remain seated, remain here, and we'll go home together. Amen. Those that will be assisting, would you please come? Amen. Wash me over again. Wash me over again. Me all again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I'm grateful. I'm thankful for his blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The day is coming. He said, I said he, a promise is a promise. The day is coming where we'll never have to set this table again. Amen. They will never have to repair and put these cups We'll never have to read the account because we're going to see him as he is. Glory. Hallelujah. We won't have to sing about the blood that the lamb shed because we'll be in the presence of the lamb. That was his promise to us. He said one day, and you're just doing this momentarily. He said, you're just doing it in remembrance of what I did. But one day we'll sup together. That's what he said. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're getting ready to go home. Just a moment. I said to you, God is a promise keeper. Amen. Look at that person next to you. Say, a promise is a promise. Tell the person on the other side. Say, a promise is a promise. And that's not just something that I'm saying. I want to tell you something. Do you know that God has kept a promise to me? Do you know that he's kept promises to you? Y'all are kind of quiet. Do you know that he's kept promises to this church? There's some things that God has said he's going to do for this church. Some that he's done. Some that we're waiting on. But I'm going to tell you, just because you don't see God moving and working on your behalf, doesn't mean that he isn't. We sing these what? Waymaker promise keeper light in the darkness he said even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working I'm telling you right now God is working some things out on your behalf I'm telling you God is moving God is working to keep his promises he's not a man that he should lie do you know that God has kept a promise to this church listen to me do you know that God has kept a promise to this church? Even this week, God has done some things for us. For you, Restoration Fellowship Church, a promise is a promise. I'm going to tell you what God did. Listen to me. He's a promise keeping God. This week, he kept a promise to us. God has blessed us with a building. on our building Friday. Let me tell you, I said a promise is a promise. Y'all sit down. We closed on our building Friday. Our 
our new building, let me tell you about it. Has offices, classrooms, an industrial kitchen, and plenty of parking. And instead of me telling y'all about it, I'm going to show you. So, I want somebody to go across the street and get Sister Ashley and the children and tell them to come over. Hurry quickly, get them. I'm going to show it to you. I need somebody to move this podium out the way so they can see. Let me, come on. Amen. this podium and move these flowers out of the way please I said a promise is a promise